Uh, hi, I'm Mark Matt. Uh, I was recruited with, into the Government of Canada in 2001 in what was a precursor to the now three times mentioned Recruitment of Policy Leaders program for which there are convenient brochures at the corner of the table. Please pick one up before you leave. <laughs> um, and uh, that year was being run as a pilot, um, which is no doubt how I got in. Um, <laughs> Uh, because I was uh, studying ancient Greek and Roman history. Um, is anyone here an ancient Greek and Roman historian by any chance? Ancient philosophy. Ancient philosophy, good on you. I used to live with an ancient philosopher. He was a, he was a like freak. Like an actual ancient philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. Um, so the, uh, you know, the, the, the government of Canada hires all kinds of people. And I suppose that's why I'm here. Um, there, the you know historically, uh, the public service has hired a lot of people who you know kind of two categories of people involved in policy. And I assume that's that's what we've all been talking about. I assume it's what you're interested in. Um, but there's there's kind of a group of people who are experts in particular areas and really focus uh, deeply into certain policy issues. So they have a, a certain kind of knowledge and expertise that they want to bring to government. And there are, there's a, a group of what I would call, and others have called, policy generalists um, who have different kinds of skill sets, uh, usually around synthesis and coordinating items and so on. Uh, and both are needed. So if you sort of ever feel like, um, I'm not sure if the government is for me, I don't know if I'm uh, going to be the world's expert on employment insurance, do I know as much as everybody else? Uh, that's not necessarily what you should be looking at. You might want to be thinking about the whole range of different kinds of opportunities that are involved uh, in working in the public service, of which there are lots. So when I started, I, um, I was an ancient historian. I had, had some other kinds of experience uh, with other groups and other things, but uh, I started in uh, Canadian Heritage. That was my very first job in the public service, working on arts files, and I have kind of an arts background. Um, and I worked in a and a group that was mainly, if any of you have ever seen uh, Pulp Fiction, the, so uh, there's, a, there's a character played by the wonderful Harvey Keitel called Mr. Wolf, who comes in and fixes a terrible problem that has arisen with the main characters. Uh, I won't spoil it for you if you haven't seen it. Um, and there's a whole group of, uh, of policy folks uh, involved in the federal government who are a bit like Mr. Wolf. Uh, not quite as cool, but <laughs> they're they're uh, a bit uh, they're they're fixers. You know, they're they're meant to come in and, and help things when they've gone awry. Uh, and when I first came into government, um, um, essentially a lot of the job that I had was doing kind of emergency management work for the Department of Heritage uh, of different kinds. Um, ended up working on files in multiculturalism and broadcasting, a bit in copyright. Uh, some international issues and was really flying all over the place in the department. Um, and since then, I, I worked there for about four, nearly five years. Uh, and now I work at the Privy Council office in a place called Priorities and Planning. Uh, and what, what I do now is help manage uh, uh, a couple of cabinet committees, the full cabinet committee and another one that the, uh, the Prime Minister chairs called Priorities and Planning which is secretly like kind of the big committee that ratifies everything. So all the government decisions have to go through that one committee. It's the trilateral commission of the government. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's like within that little journey, there's, there's I guess there's a, something that I want to highlight for you. So I mentioned that there's a different distinction between the different jobs that you can do. Um, but I, I found that there, there, you get a lot of satisfaction from doing this kind of emergency management work sometimes. Sometimes it can be exciting because uh, there's certainly lots of emergencies uh, related to government <laughs> that require people with uh, um, some sense of composure to be running around making sure that things do come together at the end of the day. So there's lots of work to be had doing that kind of stuff, and it's coordination work. Um, there's also a lot, of, a lot of work, and for my money in the end, the, the stuff that I've, I've been most proud of and most interested in are things that took a very long time to do. And especially when you're working in, in policy groups, you can sometimes feel like you're, uh, like you're playing ping pong against curtains or something. You know, <laughs> There's, it just doesn't seem like anything's bouncing back at you. Um, uh, but with with perseverance, uh, you, you find that actually over time, 
some things do come to pass. And so some of the things that I've been most proud of uh, have been have been things that took a long time to get together. Uh, one was actually the recruitment of policy leaders. So after I was recruited uh, through the pilot, I ended up working on making it an official program with, within the Government of Canada. Uh, and it's something that I and the people that, that worked with me on it are incredibly proud of because it's had a, uh, a long-lasting life well beyond things that, that, well beyond us and our input to it. Um, there is uh, one of the things that uh, within a few months of arriving at Heritage, I was given a file uh, to uh, a request had come in from an organization called the Aga Khan Development Network to set up uh, this this kind of new NGO about pluralism, taking Canada's multicultural experience and sharing any lessons uh, uh, with other countries, uh, creating kind of a good governance approach uh, around ethnic and uh, religious uh, tribal diversity. So this was a file that kind of landed on my desk. I had to start evaluating. I ended up sticking with that file for probably three and a half years. Uh, slowly inching it forward day by day uh, until in 2006 or seven I can't even remember now which um, the Prime Minister Prime Minister Harper at that point announced that um, the government of Canada was investing in it it got a, a 30 million dollar endowment it is and it's now a new NGO so it's kind of neat to be able to say you worked on something from beginning to end <laughs> and it resulted in a new institution being created uh, so things like that are, are things that have given me enormous satisfaction in my career anyway. And I think it's pretty possible for anyone. Um, just uh, It's a matter of, of uh, being in, in government and sort of pushing something forward. You also have a lot of diversity in the kinds of things you can do. And people have mentioned it uh, on the table already, so I won't go too much into it. Uh, one of the more fun things that I've done recently, there are kind of two things I might highlight. One is another kind of internal thing called Canada 150, which is a little development program where we're running for 150 public servants who are all new public servants. They've all been hired within the last five years and it's meant to, uh, runs off this kind of wiki platform so it has blogs and message boards and wiki documents and so on that they can use and they're being asked to look ahead ten years to Canada's 150th anniversary. There are 150 of them, Canada 150. Um, uh, and we've been, you know, taking them through this year-long development program, which um, has actually been enormously satisfying to do. Uh, and another kind of fun one that um, was, was actually kind of a briefer stint, but people usually are interested in, uh, has been Speeches from the Throne. So it's our group that usually uh, works on Speeches from the Throne, and there are now three Speeches from the Throne that I've... Uh, uh, had a hand in writing. Um, I especially recommend the 2000 speech from the throne. That's a really good one. Um, uh, but you know, things like that are are kind of unique opportunities that you just don't really see in other kinds of jobs, and they uh, they come with their own kinds of challenges and constraints, and you're free to ask about them. Uh, but it's really kind of a fascinating experience to go through.